Last month, journalism lost a pretty, uh, pretty large presence in our field. As we all know, Bob Simon of 60 Minutes died in an automobile accident in New York City. It was a stomach punch to so many, uh, so many of us. So tonight, the Radio Television Digital News Foundation would like to honor Bob Simon and his work with our Lifetime Achievement Award. And to help with this, we'd like to ask 60 Minutes Executive Producer Jeff Fager to come on stage as we remember Bob. Jeff, where are you? <laughs> so much to us that this great organization would honor Bob Simon with Lifetime time Achievement. I know it would mean so much to him, he wouldn't believe it. His daughter Tanya, one of our finest 60 Minutes producers, is here to accept it tonight. She produced his last story. They just finished, they just finished with the last touches when Bob left our offices that terrible night. That he is receiving a Lifetime Achievement Award posthumously is really a hard concept for us. Hard to imagine CBS News without him and 60 Minutes without him. Incredible 47-year career. He covered everything imaginable in 130 countries. Steve Croft said, I didn't know there were 130 <laughs> countries. Bob was everywhere. He loved it. He loved what he did. He was the consummate foreign correspondent. I worked with him as, as his editor on almost every story over the last two decades, but the one I remember the most was when I was with him in Hong Kong. We had just arrived, and he said, let's go down to that market where they sell the live animals. And I said, fine, I'll go get them, the cameraman. He said, no, let's just go. And I think We'd said everything about Bob, that curiosity. He wanted to experience a place, to feel it, to know it better. And inevitably, that's how his, the local flavor made it in to his writing. He was a master storyteller. He picked up on so many things most people don't see. His observations fell into every single story he touched. I believe his place is with the very best of CBS News. Corralt and Safer, Collingwood and Murrow, his heroes. His work was also memorable because he was so good at telling a story, a writer who could make anything interesting, which is, I think, what makes 60 Minutes different. Our philosophy, which was taught to us by Don Hewitt, who learned from the people who founded CBS News, taught him is that we will never do audience research to determine what stories we are going to cover. We decide what's important. And the onus is on us to make it interesting. That's our job. No matter what the subject, Bob was best at that. He could make anything interesting, anything. We're going to miss that. We'll also miss our friend. He was just so much fun to be around. Never took himself seriously. In a business, I think, where people tend to take themselves way too seriously. He never puffed himself up. He was always in the background, understated, dignified, elegant, and always armed with a joke. His jokes ranged from off-color to way off-color. <laughs> so I do have some favorites, and I'd be happy if anybody wants to hear them after here. I'm happy to hear there's a cocktail reception. We actually had the best Irish wake for a Jewish guy that I have ever been to <laughs> after his funeral. And the people, many of the people here were there that day, and it was incredible. It went on for four hours, and we just told our favorite Bob Simon jokes, and it's an infinite number. Bob always appreciated working with the fine people of CBS News. He loved our organization and believed in our spirit of collaboration. And some of his best collaborators 
are here with us tonight. Michael Gavshin, who came from London for this event, produced so many of Bob's stories, spoke with him every day. The one I remember as my favorite that we ran in the tribute was the Sea Gypsies, which you may remember, the Mocha people. But there's a limitless number of stories that Michael did. Harry Ratliff, who produced our famous Mount Athos story with Bob, and the interview that was so memorable that some of you may remember with the ecumenical patriarch Bob had inherited our Christian beat. And he took great pride in that. Dragon Mahalovich is here in spirit, produced many of Bob's stories, including the series that became so well known as The Lost Boys. And Warren Lustig was Bob's friend and favorite producer editor. All of them here tonight worked tirelessly to produce our on air tribute to Bob. An extremely difficult task when you look at the most significant body of work I believe ever compiled at CBS News by a correspondent. And every one of those stories contains a memorable line or question. It is the body of work so extensive that made the job of paying tribute to him so difficult. A curse of riches. How to decide what to include. And everyone did a marvelous job. As you can see from the short excerpt we're going to show tonight of capturing the work of a kid from the Bronx who ended up traveling all points of the globe for CBS News. But you can't replace Bob Simon. I can tell you that one of the very best things about Bob Simon is his daughter, Tanya, who's here to accept the award on his behalf tonight. Thank you. 